<laughs> I'm originally from Charlotte, North Carolina, and um, I, I love being here in Maine. I mean, it, it has become like a second home for me. It really has. Now, how did you end up coming to Maine? Well, you know how you meet someone and you fall in love and do crazy stuff like move to Maine from North Carolina? <laughs> That's what happened. And um, 19 years ago, <laughs> 19 years ago, you know, I met um, my husband, and um, it's just been. Still wonderful. Still wonderful. Yeah. And so, um, how, what did you do? What were you doing before you came here and what are you doing now? Well, before I came to Maine, um, I worked in insurance for 11 years. Um, it was an insurance company and everything was great. You know, I had this great secure job with benefits, you know, a salary, but I wasn't happy. And I went back to school and I got my degree in interior design. And I did that. I left the insurance company and I started at a good time. Um, actually, it was right after 9 11. So it was challenging, but things started to pick up. And I got involved with some really um, interesting things with design, interior design for residential mostly. Um, we did do some commercial. I worked with a friend of mine that I graduated with from um, college. And uh, we worked together, and uh, we really did some big stuff. So enjoyed doing that. And the next thing you knew, 2005, I moved away, and that changed. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still doing interior design work, or I don't do it as much as I had in the past. Um, I'm always open to it, um, but I've actually been doing more in the fashion styling. Um, industry, working with that. Um, I go back and forth to Charlotte, um, North Carolina. Um, and around 2009 to about 2012, I really started getting into some of the things here with some of the local boutiques. Um, we did a lot with Akari, um, did some fashion shows with them, which was really interesting. And just throughout um, Portland, um, and I always call it Portland's Renaissance around that time, like 2010, where things were starting to happen and things were changing, which was for the better. Yeah. You know, with um, the shops and the restaurants and now the architecture. So. all over the world, but here in the States, you know, we lost a lot of people, you know, over half a million people that we lost. Um, thank God I didn't lose anyone that was supposed to be from COVID at this time, but, um, or during, you know, COVID. Um, but I do know people who did, and so, you know, it really hit us hard. Um, but I do see that things with the vaccines and, and people practice these um, safe practices by washing your hands, by wearing a mask if you need to. I still wear mine, even though I've been vaccinated. Um, and I appreciate people who, you know, think that that's a serious thing that we should try to take care of each other. It's not always about us, it's about helping each other. Um, so I do see as we move forward through, uh, I say post COVID, because I think we'll get away from. Uh, it eventually, but I do see things happening. Um, I just was asked to do a fashion show, and so I'm excited about that. Um, sometime in October. That's so exciting. Yeah, and just you know, feeling that that good energy and feeling um, exhilarating, you yeah. know, to get to get into that. Um, searching for the models. You know, getting the stage ready. Uh, so tell me a little bit about what the process for you of preparing for this fashion show would be. Well, for me, um, as you know, um, being a model yourself, being in entertainment yourself, being on stage, it's all about the stage presence. And I always tell everyone that's involved with the fashion show, the models make the show. There will be no show without the models. Mm -hmm. And so I start a process of selecting models. And it's not that you have to be perfect. I don't even need people to have 
previous experience of being a model. Um, matter of fact, I kind of frown on it because I feel like with my shows, I've been so successful in just bringing out confidence that people have had. Maybe someone said, yeah, I've always wanted to do that, but I never had the chance. And sometimes those people make the best models. And so training them on their walks, their stage presence, and just pulling out the confidence that actually they already have. Right. They just needed someone to believe in them. You and must see some fun transformations through that. I really have. I really have. When I wake up, probably one of the first things I do is I turn on music. That inspires me. And for people that know me, some of my favorite divas like Shaka Khan, uh, Kylie LaBelle, Aretha Franklin, Janet Jackson, who I had the pleasure to meet. That's so amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy. I still pinch myself. Um, that music inspires me. And I mean, I woke up with it today, and that helped me kind of calm my nerves. I love <laughs> that interview. part of your morning routine. <laughs> I might have to add that into my yeah. morning routine. It's enlightening, it's inspiring, you know, it's soothing, you know, in a way too. Um, their voices, the lyrics, they don't make music. I'm sure my parents have said the same thing about <laughs> my music, but there's depth in a lot of their lyrics um, that really speak to you. And so, and the music is great, you know, so that gets me going. Um, it also makes me be creative. Since I have kind of transitioned into this fashion stylist uh, part of me, um, I've been going back and forth to Charlotte. And in Charlotte, there's so much more going on there, but I do want to see what else I can do here in the state of Maine. I do have a couple of friends that have ownership in boutiques and shops here. Um, I've even met some designers right here in Charlotte that attend Fashion Week that have been a part of other Fashion Weeks throughout the country. So there's so many talented people here, so just trying to center around collaborating with them, uh, reconnecting, and also introducing myself to new people that are involved in the industry here. That's something that I look forward to doing. And I don't know, and I don't want to say right now, but there are some bigger things that I do want to do um, as far as that's concerned. Mm -hmm. and, and just fun stuff, you know, because I think that's the thing about being here at Maine. Um, I will say this, that whenever there's been an invitation that's gone out about any program or any event that I've been a part of, Portlanders show up. People from Maine love to go to events. They want to be a part of what's new and what's happening. And I've never been to anything where it wasn't well attended, unless it was the weather, and even that doesn't stop Mainers. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know Mainers are yeah. like the hardest core of the hardcore. <laughs> we're, we're going out. I don't care if it's 20 feet of snow. We're going to make it happen. Yeah. We're going. And, um, you know, it's just a fun thing. And I think that at this stage in my life, that's what I want to do. It's just about relationships, um, having fun, and inspiring people to be better. You know, that's a part of what I do um, as a fashion stylist, I think, is so important. It's not just about the outer appearance, but it's about what that does to your confidence inside. It just, to see people smile and that they see themselves again, especially like, say, for a woman that has kids and she's caught up in the rut and she doesn't take that moment to actually wear something that fits her shape whether she's got a couple of extra pounds or not, but something that makes her feel sexy, vibrant, happy, yeah. you know, and to actually help someone put that on. But I had an incident um, that was racially motivated. And people see me smiling all the time. They see me put together and, you know, I well, you were like the nicest, most <laughs> gentle spirit, so just, like that's what 
Yeah. It makes me so sad to yeah. hear how, yeah, just the, that's what you went through. Yeah, well, that's just the thing. So I said, you know, I'm going to post just a statement just so that people realize that because I am this happy-go-lucky guy, life is not always like that for me. And I didn't post the name of the place, didn't post the, what happened, but people understood where I was coming from. So when I did get a chance to talk to some people about it, I did relate the story. And I knew that being in that place of business, they did not want me in there because of the way I look or the color of my skin. I will say this, being from the South, people think that, oh, you must experience racism all the time, because I've had that comment said to me here and being in the North, mm-hmm. as far as North and the United States, you can go on the East Coast. Um, but I will say, being here, I have faced racism head on uh, several times, um, and it's kind of a non-stop thing, but I don't let it get me down, because I know everyone is not like that. But I have experienced it um, in a more in my face great way. And so dealing with it, I deal with it well. Um, I fight my battle that needs to be fought. Sometimes it's just about walking out or just about moving on. And there are times when you just need to say something about it. People are going to be ignorant no matter where you are. People are going to be good and kind helpful no matter where you are. It's just about how you deal with it. And I think I just had my cup and run over <laughs> with the incident well, that has come up. In the civil rights movement. The thing that helped Martin Luther King in the civil rights movement were other people getting involved that didn't look like him. Right. Um, there wasn't a real change in things until we had our white brothers and sisters that were by our side. Um, and we stood up to things that were unjust. So if you see something, say something, you know you have a friend that may even make a racial joke or a racial comment, and you know that's not right. Say, hey, dude, that's not cool. You know, in 2021, we're still doing that. Right. You know, but that's what it takes. It's going to take for other people to stand up against it. Because that incident that I was in, I was in there by myself. I didn't have anybody to help me out or back me up. You right, know. you're just going shopping at a store. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm in there, so what am I going to do? Am I going to make a scene? Then I look like a crazy black mad person. Right. You know, so no, I'm not going to do that. You know, I, I did try to be as calm as possible and get out of the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, had I had a witness, had I had other people with me, I probably would have spoken up. Mm-hmm. But that's what racism is about. You right. know, we have to make the choice of what we're going to do in that instance. So, yeah. um, I think I did the best thing I could do for myself, and I'll never go and spend another dollar with it. So, yeah. you know, I, have, I had to do what was right for me, and that was safe. Yeah. I know, and then sometimes it's the subtleties, like you were explaining about that incident later in the day of the nice little grandma that you thought was super sweet until she made the, that comment. Yeah, that was the weirdest day. So I had the incident in the one place of business that morning. And after reading the comments that I posted, what I posted on Facebook and, and seeing all the positive comments of my friends and people I didn't even know reaching out, that really made me feel good. So towards the evening, I had to make a return and um, this old lady assisted me and she was an older white lady. She was very kind to me. And there was a lady who was speaking Spanish close by and she heard her and she leaned into me, the wrong person at the counter. And she said, I wish they wouldn't speak their language. They should speak English. They're in America. Mm-hmm. And that was my moment. And I stood up and I said, well, you don't know if she's speaking to someone that can't speak English. And if you had someone in that situation, what would you do? Mm -hmm. And she got a little perturbed and she rang me out and didn't say a word to me because she knew that I was not having 
Right. But at least you knew that that was not the right thing to say and not to say to me. No matter what you think or believe, mm -hmm. um, especially when we're dealing with people in public places and places of business, um, that's just how I feel about it. There's a lot in history that was misplaced, right. a lot in history that was hidden and that still is hidden. And it's just like anything else, until you go back to learn about where the breakdown happened, what happened for the time that led up to now. And I think we have to research it. There needs to be more history, correct history, so people feel valued um, because you acknowledge things that these people are here and this is why. And I think that to move forward also I don't think there needs to be like all these major apologies because you can do it but if this is big knowledge if this is what's happening this is how we're going to move forward with this now and I think that's the main problem that when you start talking about the past or start talking about history you know certain people get weirded out or they they don't know what to do Sometimes you don't need to do anything but listen. You know? Yeah. And, and I think when you listen, you hear what's being said, and then when you hear something, you understand why these people feel this way. Mm -hmm. You know, when we talk about slavery and, and, and black people, and how, you know, their culture is, and, you know, we talk about that a lot. But have we ever thought about how the Indians? You know, we don't think about them. Right. You know, they are basically on the back right? <laughs> You know, I think about that sometimes. We hear about black men. But the Indians were here first. They were here first. Right. And they have no say in anything. Exactly. You know, so what about their history? Can we talk about that? No. Everything's been swept under the rug. Right. And you can't continue to do that because you get this huge lump mm -hmm. <laughs> under a rug. You can't hide it anymore, is what I'm saying. Yeah. So there needs to be conversations had. And, and like I said, history talks. So people understand this is what happened. Yeah. What would you like to see um, come out of this moment in time? I just want to see people try to be, uh, try to get along better. Try to be a little bit more compassionate with social media and reality shows. Everybody is just so up in arms and doing this. You know, we're doing this all the time. We're commenting on this and we're so aggressive. There was a time when we did actually sit down and have a conversation. We could actually agree to disagree and be friends. It's changed. If I don't agree with what you say, I don't like you anymore. I don't have to block you, unlike you, right. with a stroke of my index finger. Right. Or my thumb, depending on what I'm holding in my hand at the time. Yeah. <laughs> and then with, you know, voice recognition, you probably could say, Alexa, block him. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, but I think we've gotten away from just being more personal with each other because that's how we got to know each other not by how many followers he or she has or how many pictures they post because people make up pictures and they put them out there but you get to know each other and I think we've gotten away from that when I was growing up we knew our neighbors you could actually go next door and borrow a couple of whatever right. from your neighbor I wouldn't dare do that now mm -hmm. back to racism I hear a lot of people especially people of the Caucasian or white community, they say, oh, well, I don't see color, you know, so I'm not racist. Mm -hmm. No, that's the wrong thing to say. Yeah. I want you to see my color because what I look like is my unique. That that makes me who I am. Um, but I have a heart. You know, that doesn't have a color. Right. You know, it, it's just hopefully you see the genius in my heart. 
but I love the beauty of other people, you know, wherever they're from. It's like the flowers of the table. Like we see the yellow, the white, I'm not the yellow, but the purple, the white, and the red. We see all those beautiful colors that make each one of those unique. But in that bouquet, they complement each other perfectly. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do as a human race. You know, these are all the same flowers. They're just different colors. Mm -hmm. You know, but they make the bouquets beautiful, and that's how we should be. So is there anything that you just really would love for people to know and understand about your perspective or um, anything that inspires you? other people should be inspired through as well. well I will say this, and I think I've touched on it a lot. People are inspired. Um, I tell you about how I love music, but just being around positive people. People always, other people tell me that, you know, you're this person, like being around you, you're so positive. I'm usually like that 95% of the time. I have my days because I'm human. But really, it, it's other people that inspire me. My family, um, my extended family, people that I meet. I just met you. We don't know each other that well, but I feel like I've known you for a long time. Because you have such a warm personality and, and a positivity about you. And I think what you give off, that aura that you give off, give off. Positive energy aura, you attract that. If you're a person that's complaining all the time and negative, that's who you're going to have hanging around you. And those are the situations that you will get yourself into 90% of the time. Right. Um, life is not perfect, but I will say overall, what inspires me is it's probably people with that positive attitude and that outlook. I look at a lot of my friends. <laughs> yeah, um, dance is one of them. You know, that really works the brain. And um, it makes you feel good. It keeps you fit. Um, I work out uh, three times a week. Um, I used to do a lot more yoga than I have in the past, but hopefully getting back into that post COVID. Um, that's always something that Trying to find out how to make recipes that are healthy but still taste wonderful. Um, and again, just surrounding yourself with possible people. Um, I think that comes back a lot. You have people that you talk to that may not understand what you're going through, but they get you. And, and they will have something positive and enlightening to say that builds you up. Um, something that's encouraging and everybody's not going to understand our exchanges all the time. But if they love you and they know you and they get you, they're going to say something that's going to make you feel better. So yeah, those are the things that are really Yeah. So eat well. Uh, you know, 
live a clean life. Um, but I think most of that goes back to, I know I have good genes, thanks to my parents. <laughs> but I look at their life too, they're actually still here. Um, they've been married for 53 years. Wow. And one of the things that my mom said about my dad at their 50th anniversary party, she said he still makes me laugh. And when I think about that, he still makes her feel good here, you know, in her heart. So I just think whether you're married or not, or with someone or not, it's the people around you. If they make you feel good in your heart, you'll be useful all the time, you know. I think laughing, smiling, this is something that keeps you young, you know. I think I try to do that as much as I can. You're always laughing. <laughs> well, I so appreciate you being willing to come out and have this conversation with us, even with all the construction, construction and, and uh, hey, they're getting ready, man. <laughs> Something's going on. The plane's coming yeah. over. <laughs> Everybody's like, we've been locked up long enough. So. <laughs> well, definitely, we'll keep. I'll keep everyone updated too with uh, everything going on with your fashion show and. Yes. when you have that model call going on and um, yeah and hopefully we can have you back on and yeah. do something again in the future yeah maybe we can do like a runway just to kind of show you guys what we're working with oh, yeah. closer to the show that would be fun that would be so fun well thank you again again this is Will Johnson and thank you, thank you for tuning into Compassionate Conversations <laughs>